So we're gonna go to the next stage. Next stage takes a bit longer. We're gonna use oil paints and we're gonna do it in two stages. Now, somebody uses this stupid term, oil paint rendering, which just doesn't make sense at all to me at all. It doesn't mean anything, yeah? What we're gonna do, we're gonna use oil paints and we're gonna just basically apply them onto the existing colors. That's all it is. We're just gonna be repainting really using oil colors. Why do we use oil colors? Um, the nature of them are very translucent. They're see-through, they're not opaque. And that means that, again, we get a very subtle buildup. And also, again, as I explained, we can get these blending of shades. Now, the method is really quite easy. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do it in two stages. We're gonna go for the light colors first, the complementary colors to the sand. So we've got a, uh, a faded white. Um, I think this is a, well, it's like a yellow anyways, a three-tone fading. There's a yellow light, sunny flesh tone as well. Quite suitable, complementary colors to what's already on there. We are not going to blend with these dark colors. We're gonna do that later. If we use all the light colors only, and we'll make up a little palette on cardboard as usual, and start blending them, and you'll see that in the montage. Um, as these mix together, they're complementary to one another, and they're not gonna turn into a muddy sort of shade. This is just the easiest way to do that. The only sort of drawback is it's timing. It's, you need to let everything sort of dry out. So the process takes quite a long time to do, but then we need to leave it basically 24 hours, then, We'll go into our darks and we'll repeat the sort of process. A little bit different, you'll see it in the montage. But anyways, let's crack on. The only thing to mention as well, we can use whatever solvent we wish, enamel thinners or white spirits. Um, enamel thinner does dry out a little bit quicker, I find. So uh, let's crack on with this.
Okay, let's just have a little recap. Um, changing plans, why not? I originally thought that I would go in with dark oils after the light ones, but actually went straight on to like the detailed um, dark washing around the panel lines, that sort of area. And then just added on a few tones using some dark colors, just localized washes, and also um, added on some of that, uh, like you sprinkle on, wash as well, blend it on. And I'm quite liking the way this is looking at the moment. Um, show you some of this effect here on this panel here. You can see the darker shading, very fine streaking as well. I like the streaking to be barely visible. I don't like very obvious streaks. So what's the next thing we're gonna do now? We're gonna do the uh, paint wear effects or chipping, whatever you wanna call it. However, we're not gonna do it in that cliched manner that you hear all these guys saying, oh, you do it all over the place because uh, everybody crawls all over it. Instead, we're just gonna go by the references. References indicate chipping just on here, on this um, portion of the rear deck there. Um, and also on these points, we've got the physical damage that we actually did on the ERA blocks. And I'm not going to over exaggerate that. However, on these portions here, these are like armored plates. This is we're gonna paint on chipping. And also the other place that gets quite worn is this bustle rack. Um, so we're gonna try and get our chipping, the paint chip effects as small as possible. So let's crack on with that. The other thing as well, I think we'll do to round things off. We've got, unfortunately, this is, um, I try and avoid this, differing reflectivity on the model. Um, some of the decals are sort of reflective and that's not too good. I usually can avoid applying any varnishes. In this case, I don't think I can escape it. So I might apply a light varnish just in certain areas. So I want to get it all overall matte looking and uh, I think we can wrap it up, let's go.
And on that note, we are finished. I'll just, um, I think everything's pretty self-explanatory in the video, in that montage. But maybe I'll just explain a little bit about what the weathering has not been. That might be even, that's probably more relevant in this case. Now, that last step that I did, applying the um, deck tan, has faded down everything and it's just given it that overall homogenous look on top. Before, obviously remember we looked at um, contrast technique, but now look at how everything sort of faded into one and it complements everything quite nicely. Um, somebody made a comment about stowage, that was kind of interesting, uh, saying that uh, these tanks should have lots and lots of stowage. Well. We're looking at um, a Tusk one during the insurgency phase. And these tanks were operating from forward patrol bases. They were returning to bases every night. So there was no need for them to bring out lots and lots of equipment. They'd bring out the bare stuff that they need. So probably a cool pack, some rations, and the water canisters. Fuel canisters, absolutely not, would not be brought on board. Of course, um, they're a flammable source of ignition and you wouldn't have them stowed on the, in the rear deck there. So we've got water canisters, rations, and, and the bare minimum. The other thing to pay attention to is the way that the stowage is actually held on. And in this case, they actually, the spare wheels are held on with a, um, a guide horn. So that's worth sort of noting. Uh, overall, I do quite like the way this has turned out. It's, it's turned out quite well. There's some other points as well in terms of the weathering as well. Um, Dust is always going to be the theme in desert type vehicles, but in this case, um, probably hopefully you can see it. Uh, we went for mod splatter as well on the rear and on the front glasses as well. Just something different. I mean, mud does occur, uh, occur certainly. And then we kept the, um, the paint wear effects extremely restrained. Look at how you can't even see them. I need to zoom you in to show you the uh, paint chip effects and the streaking. There's only one or two streaks on here and I deliberately have uh, conveyed that because that's what I saw on the real vehicles. They aren't massively chipped. There might be one or two stone chips where there's been a collision with something, but overall not, so that concludes it. Anyways, hope you enjoy the finished pictures. Just um, show them just for the moment and of course going to be on to the next build uh, again thank you to my patreon Henry Lafortine for inspiring me to build this Tusk one it's been um, really enjoyable uh, just actually just show you this as well this is my third Abrams now I've done a 35th just show you the previous one uh, here this is a dragon kit which is absolutely fantastic this is set v2 but um, in all honesty I really do like uh, this Desert SCP. I think it looks fantastic. So uh, hope you've enjoyed it as well, really. And um, yeah, I think the next video, I think we'll do a little bit of an introduction. We'll go back to aircraft and um, see you very soon. So this is The Bear. I'm out of here and see you soon.